Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm a graphic designer and an all-around creative person. Since we've just entered 2023, I know a lot of you are motivated to start your New Year's resolutions. My New Year's resolution for 2022 was to read more, specifically self-help books. For those who don't know, the prefrontal cortex is part of the brain that's implicated in planning, complex cognitive behavior, personality expression, decision making, and moderating social behavior. More than any other part of our brain, this area dictates our personality, our goals, and our values. The prefrontal cortex stops developing when you turn 25. In other words, how you are when you're 25 is a pretty good indicator of how you'll continue to be as you get older. Since my 25th birthday was approaching and I felt that there were parts of myself that I wanted to further develop, this was a fun challenge to push myself to really grow my mindset. I'm 25 now, but that doesn't mean that my period of growth suddenly stopped when my birthday came around. I still believe that people can change no matter their age, but they have to be open to that change. I definitely learned a lot throughout this period of time and I'm happy to say that I came out as a newer and improved version of myself. So let's get into it and I'll talk about all the books I read and maybe you'll want to read them too. So the first book I read that started my journey was Austin Kleon's book, Show Your Work. I first read it in December of 2021 when I was sick with COVID. I had a lot of time to myself since I was isolating in my room and I decided to give the book a try since I had just gotten it as a gift. My biggest takeaway from this book was learning to let go of the things that are no longer serving us. In this particular instance, it was talking about art. In 2021, I spent the whole year creating and promoting my small business called Pogo Bear and Friends. My shop didn't quite get the traction that I was hoping for, and I started to lose interest and motivation to keep it going. The thing is, I don't think my shop was bad by any means. I think it would be thriving now had I still persisted, but at the time, I didn't have confidence in myself, and... I lack some strategy when it came to running a business. This book helped me realize that my shop was bringing me more stress than happiness, so I decided that I would close my shop indefinitely once 2021 ended and I haven't looked back since. And from there, my journey of reading self-help books began. Some of the books I read this past year had more of an impact than others, so I'll be focusing on my favorites and my personal takeaways from each. The Fifth Agreement is an expansion of the author's book, The Four Agreements. The book talks about the five agreements, which are one, be impeccable with your word, two, don't take anything personally, three, don't make assumptions, four, always do your best, and five, be skeptical but learn to listen. All five agreements taught me a little something, but the one that shifted my mindset the most was number two, don't take anything personally. One of my pet peeves before was giving someone advice and seeing them do the exact opposite. When it comes to someone you care about, you only want what's best for them. So by them disregarding your advice, you may feel disrespected. After reading this book, I learned to accept that I have no control over others' thoughts, feelings, and actions. I can be pretty stubborn at times, so if I don't want to do something and no one can convince me otherwise, then I shouldn't really expect others to follow through with my advice. So now, when people do ask for advice, I give advice with their best interests in mind, but everyone is going on their own individual journey and will make a decision based on what they believe is right at that time. Like many people, I struggle to be consistent with good habits that I want to incorporate into my regular routine. A very popular book that helped lay out the foundation to building good habits and breaking bad ones was Atomic Habits. The book is an easy read and has actual helpful tips on how to set yourself up for success when it comes to building good habits. The lessons I learned through this book trickled into various aspects of my life, but I would say it really came in handy when I left my job back in October without a backup plan. When I made the decision to quit my job, my usual routine that kept me productive from 9 to 5 was no longer there. I had plans and goals that I wanted to accomplish, but I knew that it was difficult for me to follow through when I lacked structure and the pressure of deadlines. I started using a daily planner and I would spend every night mapping out what I would do the next day by the hour. For me personally, this was the best method to keep me motivated throughout the day because I have a physical reminder of what I need to do at any given moment and I like the satisfaction of checking things off of my to-do list. So whether you're like me and have difficulty staying on task or you want to become more consistent at one thing like exercising, Atomic Habits equips you with the knowledge and skills to get started. Similarly to Atomic Habits, No Excuses was another book that helped me understand that our actions in our present time can greatly affect our future as a whole. The author discusses how 1% improvements can compound over time. This can also be applied to bad habits. You might not be able to see that 1% change every day, but years from now, you can really see how what you did or didn't do had an impact. 
Since we live in such a digital age now, instant gratification has become more and more prevalent in our daily lives. Constantly scrolling on TikTok with an endless amount of content to watch, maybe not taking dating as seriously because there's always going to be something new on dating apps, or even the speed in which we receive our Amazon packages. We almost forget what it feels like to patiently wait to see results on something that we work towards. I think there needs to be a balance between being in the present moment and thinking ahead towards our future. We have to be honest with ourselves and think, what can I do today that will help my future self? It's never easy to get up and do that one thing we've all been procrastinating on, but when you really value yourself, you know that what you're doing today will be better for you in the long run. The last book I'll talk about in depth is one of my favorites that I read this year called Don't Believe Everything You Think. The biggest lesson I learned from this book is the distinction between thoughts versus thinking. Simply knowing the difference will make your life less stressful. We all have thousands of thoughts that pop into our head each day, but once you start thinking about a thought, that's when it could take a turn for the worse. This book helped me realize that just because you have a thought doesn't mean that it is the truth. Once we're able to successfully detach ourselves from thoughts that do not serve us, it is a lot easier to shrug it off and keep moving forward. This book was such an easy read that I finished it in a day, so I would say this is a great book to get started with. Now, there were a couple of books that I read this year that didn't resonate with me as much. I read 101 essays that would change the way you think because there were a lot of positive comments about it online. I don't think I read it in its entirety because I did get a little bored, so instead of reading it in chronological order, I would just flip to a random page and start reading. I think I did end up reading about 80% of it though. The author of A Manual for Manifesting Your Dream Life really emphasizes this idea that everything that you need to live the life you want is already within you. While I believe that this is very true, I still don't know how to actually tap into that power and make it happen. I was hoping that the author would discuss steps how to really get into that mindset. Whether or not I enjoyed a book is completely my personal opinion, but I hope that by talking about them, it encourages you to try them out for yourself. I think everyone can read the same book and have completely different interpretations of it. The beautiful part about reading is having that quiet time away from technology, really sitting with your thoughts and forming your own opinions. While the internet is a powerful tool, I feel like it's so easy for your opinion to be swayed the moment you start reading the comments. That is why I benefited a lot from reading books because I could read a passage and decide for myself what that means to me. I never viewed self-help books as a way to fix myself, but I did see it as a way to provide a new perspective and shift the way that I viewed life. If you made it this far, thank you so much for giving your attention to what I have to say. If you have any questions or book suggestions, please feel free to comment down below. Thank you, see you next time, bye!